Hey, everybody, Shell Broadnex here with another episode of Stager Talk. This is a Meet the Candidates edition, and I am super stoked today to have Kristen Calvert on. Hello, Kristen. Hi, everybody. So great to have you. I want to take a minute also to introduce everyone else. So with the chairperson of the board of directors is Jacqueline Franklin, the fabulous Jackie Franklin. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Nice to have you here with us this morning. And then we also have the indomitable Annie Furlow from Florida. Welcome. Hey, everybody. And the most fabulous Ellen Mann. And Ellen, you are now in British Columbia. I am, yeah. <laughs> Relocated. <laughs> Got to get all the problems right. You are in BC, Canada. Okay. So welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And then, of course, the heart of Risa, Manol Shamreen from Texas. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So we are super excited today. Like I said, we're going to do these Meet the Candidates interview so the members can have an opportunity to get to know everybody um, because there's a thing called voting. I'm unsure if everybody's actually heard of it, but this this neat thing where you go out and you vote for people that are the best people to take on the role that you need them to. So you should do it. Always get out and vote. So we're going to go ahead and get started so you can get to know Kristen. Um, and the first question um, is going to go with Annie. Good started. All right. So, hey, Kristen, I'm so hey. excited that um, you are here today. Uh, and, you know, we go back a long ways and, and we met probably about, what, five years ago yeah. at a retreat. And I learned so much about you. Um, and one of the things is that you've been in real estate for a long time. So anytime I have a real estate question, I always call Kristen. Um, but what made you want to get into the real estate staging uh, world and how long have you been a stager? Okay. Well, I became a licensed realtor in 2008 during the recession, the hardest part um, when a lot of agents were leaving and I'm like, okay, I'm here for it. We did a lot of staging in our foreclosed homes, to be honest, back then or pre foreclosed homes. And so we started just putting light furniture in. I would not call it staging of any type of level that we do today, but it, it got the job done. And um, in 20, let's see, tw six years ago, um, I decided I was a much better stager than I was a realtor. Um, there was, I, I knew what it took to get the houses ready to go and to market it. And I really feel, felt like very called into that space. And honestly, here in Detroit, we didn't have a lot of staging companies. And so, um, other realtors started asking me if we could bring some stuff into their houses. And I think that's kind of how, what led us into it. So I always call myself a recovering realtor because I know what it takes, what they do on the back end so much about. And I just like to, I like to be somebody's helper. I like to be their sidekick, their Yoda, their, you know, somebody that's there, part of their team with the realtor. And so that's how I got into staging. Awesome. That's awesome. Now, I years ago what was that that was six years ago I believe it was six years ago it goes by so fast it was 2016 so now I'm trying to think yes that's when we officially launched yes January of 2016 so almost seven years that's incredible just incredible so d everybody has such different backgrounds and with a real estate background it really benefits you knowing the terminology, just understanding the industry as a whole, but then you've got the staging side of it. So do you have a background in visual merchandising or what it's about your education, any designations you hold? Did you get core education in, in staging? What does that all yeah. look like? Okay. Great question. Um, first of all, my mom was an interior designer. So we always lived in really pretty homes we always went to open houses. I think you hear that a lot. You know, a lot of realtors get into into um, real estate because they went to open houses. I got into it because of my mom and that that type of industry. Um, so that kind of piqued my interest. My background is in marketing and um, public relations. So I knew, you know, really what we're doing is we're putting together a marketing piece to sell something. And so that kind of brought into um, what I bring to the table here too. Um, let's see what, gosh, what else do we, what other, oh, because shell now I just lost my train of thought. Did you take core, <laughs> core training from oh, anybody in the industry? Yes, I did. I did. I took it, um, from staging studio and, um, CSP. I think I can always get those letters a little bit incorrect. I'm dyslexic. So it's a little, I'm like 
So I did take those classes. I'm always looking on trends too, to see what's going on, been to furniture markets. Um, so I try to keep up with everything. Um, and we like to do all that training here at our at um, Stage Detroit. So everybody on our staff has actually gone through a lot a lot of those classes too. I even put my movers through some of it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like just so they know what the the vernacular, what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, it's really good to keep everybody. And we're such a small team too. So if everybody can start chipping in, we did have mover a mover day where we're like, okay, you guys are staging today. It wasn't the best experience. <laughs> they still can't move them. They still cannot make a bed, but you know, we're working on it. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So, so um, uh, I have number three. Um, so it sounds like you're, you've got a team in place. Are you new to leadership? Is this something new since you started your company? I think one thing is that um, once I started the company, leadership is something that I've had to really take on and learn. Um, it's not a natural, I wouldn't say it's natural. I guess I come across as naturally maybe bossy, um, but bossy doesn't bring good leadership. And so it's really leadership I've had to work on a lot, lots of books. Um, I've taken the Goldman Sachs program recently. Um, small business classes, which has really taught me how to be a better leader and better leadership really comes to listening really well. If I had anything to say about leadership is listen to what other people are saying, try to understand why they are looking at it that way. And we try to have a culture here at Stage Detroit that is very um, respectful to everybody that's on the team because you take one person out of that team your logistics mover, your warehouse manager, you take one person out and you don't have a good team to lead. So respecting everybody is, I, is what I feel and listening really well. So it's something I've learned and keep learning to this day. Have I you love that. And can I just, leadership? let me just interject here. Everybody <laughs> raise your hand if you've been called bossy at some point in your life. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? This is the thing. Cheryl Sandler <laughs> put something out years ago called ban bossy. I want the word bossy banned or otherwise it just means equal mad leadership skills. That's what it means. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done any leadership um, stuff with Risa at all? No, I haven't actually. Um, good question. I haven't. I hadn't either. <laughs> okay. I hadn't either. So I mean, okay. Either. I had neither. <laughs> well, I started at the local. Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So I've been with Risa forever now, and it's awesome. Um, I founded it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It, it's one of those things. It's always great when you have people like Manol. Manol has literally worked her way all the way up from right ground up. zero all the way up through National Board of Directors. And it's great because you have so many um, different experiences to be able to add to it. But on the same note, it's really not a requirement to get on the national right. board to be able to right. have had all that because all your other experiences, those are skill sets. Skill exactly. sets are what's needed and what we look for. So uh, as you can see, three, three, three of you here um, had not done local leadership before. So congrats to all. Yeah, so a lot of people come from different backgrounds, right, into staging industry. And I love, Kristen, how you've identified that terminology workshop to be one of your uh, projects in the future. But I was just wondering if, um, if you could speak to something that you would consider your most significant professional contribution towards the staging industry. Uh, you know what, here in, D I, get, I, I would say it'd be on more on a local level in Detroit is that, um, when I got into, when I first launched Stage Detroit, there were only, you know, there were two large companies here doing staging and they did a great job. I actually applaud them. They started when nobody knew anything about staging. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I've done here is really, I'm hoping that we brought, we, you know, we've collectively brought the bar up of what staging is here in Detroit. And now we're seeing a lot of other stagers now jumping in in this marketplace and we're it's really been trying to educate 
um, realtors, homeowners, investors into understanding what staging is and what we bring to the table. But also we have collectively raised our prices, which I think has been a, a fantastic thing here in, in Detroit. Because when I first got into the business, a realtor flat out told me, you'll never get more than $1,000 per stage ever. Oh, wow. I never have. She did staging too. So she, you know, I've never got more than a thousand and I just raised my rates right away. Um, and it's really believing and understanding your worth and what you're bringing to the table for staging. And so I feel like collectively as a whole, we've been brought up what staging is, what we bring to the table, but also letting other stagers know this is what we, this is what we're doing and we're doing it so that we can, as you know, nationwide, we can, um, really make staging an essential part of a listing, especially here in Detroit. It's not, you know, it's, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I like that. You know, if you put stuff into a vacant home, you're just cluttering the space or, you know, but it's a lot of talking and educating. So that's That's really what we're trying to educate. Yeah. And just collectively bring up like the industry standard elevated. So that's, that's really awesome. Exactly. That's great. So can you please share with us, we all know that we're all out in the, in the industry, creating our own individual identity as business owners and as business entities. But is there someone in business, doesn't have to necessarily be real estate staging, that has influenced and kind of inspired you and how you formulated your business over the years? This was the easiest question for me to answer <laughs> because... Um, uh, there's this uh, Molly McDonald. I met her 20 years ago when I first first got into my, got my career actually kind of running. I was doing uh, selling advertisements for a newspaper I didn't believe in. Not the best sales job. I was not <laughs> good at it back then. But what I learned from Molly is she um, she was diagnosed after the age of 50 with breast cancer and oh. was going through a huge life change at that time where she was going through a very difficult divorce and restarting her career. And she found herself um, basically food stamps. She came from a multi-million dollar home. She had a lot of money, but her she just went through a lot of um, difficulty during that financial part. And so what she did is she just pivoted. She's like, I'm going to do something about this. I'm, I want to be able to help people after um, they are diagnosed with cancer. And so to, the, to this day, she is now has a nationwide pro, um, She's nationwide. And what I've learned from her is at any time in our life, we might have to pivot our career somewhere. And yes. everything we bring along the way is what we're bringing to the next chapter of our life. And I know a lot of RISA members have had other careers in totally different aspects mm-hmm. of whatever yeah. they're, I mean, some of this, like a school teacher, um, an attorney, or everybody's bringing something new to the table. And that's really important, I think, for us to encourage the, anybody who wants to change and pivot after the age of, you know, it could be whatever age, 50, 60. Molly is now, I won't even say her name, but she's one of my closest friends and a dear member, um, dear, like, mentor of mine. So, yeah, she, so that was an easy question. I hope yeah. someday you guys, if you met her, she's pretty fantastic. And pivoting, pivoting is so critical, especially now with everything that's happened after COVID, what's happening with the industry changing so rapidly, technology, et cetera. So being mm-hmm. able to pivot is something that is super critical as a skill yeah. to have as a it is, and just in business in general. So that's very, very key. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So in someone like yourself being in business for so long, you, you, you get red flag clients, struggles, making different, you know, difficult decisions for your business when you're deciding to scale. What is, can you name like one particular struggle that you had that was difficult to overcome, but you overcame it? I think, excuse me, I'm like, I've got, I'm going to lose my voice within the next 24 hours. I can tell. So <laughs> you hear it crackling a little. Um, I think for me, it was understanding my worth was really critical in this business because you could take it so personally like Mm -hmm. oh I didn't like that pillow well then change the pillow out that's what I would normally say today or I didn't like how you did this it's but as soon as you understand your worth and what you bring to the table I brought you know 12 years of real estate experience I brought 
marketing. I brought, I know what looks good. When you start understanding all that, I think you really understand how you can really do the best job you can for your clients. But when we're there sitting there and not, we lack our confidence, we're bringing that, that, like that lack of confidence. We're always going to be switching and swaying and just kind of in the, you know, the wind's going to blow us around. So now today, if I get a critical review or if I get somebody to say, oh, I don't want this, I can just stand up and say, I know what I bring to the table. I know that, you know, switching out something is easy enough, or maybe it's, um, I'm going to stand by my price. I don't negotiate my price at all. I mean, yeah. at all. Awesome. And even if it's, uh, we really need the stage this week, I don't negotiate. Like, I understand. And I go, I say, our pricing is very transparent. I want everybody who comes to like work with us understand. Um, and that's hard to do. And that, that was a struggle. And I still struggle maybe some days with that too. So I yeah. so, hope that helps. Um, so you've got a team in place at your business. And if you join the board, we are a team. Um, what do you think is the best way to make decisions as a team? Great question. I was like, I, this is another one that I'm like, oh, I know. Um, this <laughs> summer I went through the Goldman Sachs small K program. I highly suggest everybody look at it. It's basically a very quick um, NBA for entrepreneurs. It's like a 12 week course. It was about 30 hours of education a week and it took me, but the one class that I took was called, um, it was by a, a negotiator. And what I understood in the book was called Bring Yourself. And she's just this phenomenal teacher and what it is in fair negotiating. And I think that this is so important when you work with a team is to listen well. Like in this day and age, I think we can all say that is to listen really well, value yourself and the other's at the table. So know what you're worth, but also know what somebody else's worth is at the table. And I always think this, and this is how I always ran my negotiation with real estate is you never take more than what is what you need. And so understand that we're going to, we're going to negotiate and listen well, and not just be, this is my way or the highway, because right. everybody has different opinions. And we could always say, let's step into somebody else's shoes, but really we have to. And that's how you negotiate. And I guess as a team player, negotiating and team playing, I always kind of just put those two together. I love that point. Yeah. I, I heard that. once a, a quote that was, um, people spend more time listening in terms of an answer than listening in terms of hearing what the other person's saying. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I really like that message. What it, somebody also said, put down your pen and lean back because that means you're you're really trying to take it in. And so instead of being like, okay, what is this? You know, you don't, if you know what your worth is and you know what you want and you think it's a fair thing to to, to argue for, you don't need to sit and, and, and be like calculating. I think mm -hmm. just listening to it. Yeah, very true. That's really good. Thanks. I like that, Ellen. Yeah. So Kristen, I mean, we go back a long ways. We're also in a masterminds group together and you yeah. bring so much to our masterminds group and so much positivity, so many um, different answers to all of our questions that we bring to the table. And I love that you're just so confident. Um, so please tell us, you know, why you'd be such an amazing candidate for the board. You know, I think I probably do come across as confident, but I also know who's all around me to make, to build up that confidence. Mm -hmm. And so I like having people that are there that build you up. And so I think that's one thing that I can do is I, I do like being people's cheerleader. I do like looking at the room and seeing who might need some, like who needs that. Let's get, let's get this going. Let's get this done for you. Um, so I hope that I can bring some of that to Risa. Um, I, I also want to say, you know, I want to listen to what everything's that's going on. You know, 
I'm not, I don't want to be like, oh, here's what I want done. You know, what does collectively as a group yes. needs to be done? And I think you're right, Annie. I do have like a kind of a hodgepodge of a career that brings a lot of different things to it. You know, like I'm not, I'm not an interior designer, but I know Annie, you know, I love reading contracts, which is the weirdest thing. Like why you're so awesome in the masterminds because we're kind of like Kristen what do you think about this and then you give us your like detailed answer and it's amazing I love it I mean like title work um insurance contracts uh, you know anything I'm like okay okay so I think so some of it is I do like some of those details where some people might not really believe that I like details but I love contracts I love things that here's a black and white this is so now we're working within within this time within this framework, right? I love the, those kind of things because then creativity comes when you have a framework of which you're working in. Mm-hmm. I hope that I hope that you know there's yeah. a lot of freedom in that. For sure, that makes a lot of sense. Well, we have come to the end of our time, and oh. uh, I hope everybody had a, a, a great experience here and got to know Kristen a little bit better. Um, mm-hmm. Stay tuned. Uh, we have more of these coming for Stater Talk. We're going to meet with Yolanda Tillman tomorrow. All of these are recorded so you can catch them at any time it's convenient. And don't forget to get out and vote. There's that thing called V-O-T-E. Voting means something. Mm-hmm. Everybody should do it all the time, every time. Vote for the best candidate that's going to work for you and have your best interests at heart. Um, for everybody else, Thank you all for joining us today. And that wraps up another edition of Stager Talk. Until next time, happy staging. Bye, guys. Thank Thank you. you. I appreciate it. (laughs) Thank you.